In this video, I go over how to apply a tileable material to a simple prop that has custom UVs. This workflow is really useful in cases where you want to add details to a model without having to sculpt and paint those details. In this case, I will be showing this process by creating a simple container prop using the latest version of Maya. Here I use standard modeling techniques such as bevels, extrusions, and adding edge loops by way of using the multi-cut tool. I also created a handle at the top using simple shapes as well. The next step was to create the UVs for the model. For this model, since it's mainly a cylindrical shape, I applied a cylindrical UV map to it. I cleaned up areas of distortion by moving some of the UVs in the UV window. I applied planar maps with the setting set to best plane for the top and the bottom portions of the model. Once I had the UVs ready, I packed them in the UV quadrant, utilizing as much space as possible. In this case, I also increased the size of the UVs for the handle in order to use more space. Keep in mind that if you do that, the UVs which are increased in size will also have higher resolution than the rest of the model. With the UVs ready and packed, I proceeded to group and name the pieces of the model. In this case, I also added the suffix underscore low since I planned to bake by mesh name in Substance Painter. I duplicated the group to create the high poly version. For the high poly version, I simply replaced the suffix to be underscore high and added some simple bevels to the edges. I exported the models as FBX files. In Substance Painter, I loaded the low poly and high poly in the bake settings. I baked my maps and also set the settings to bake by mesh name. At this point, I added the tileable material I would use to texture the model. If you're following along and would like to access this material, I will add a link in the video description for you to download it. I applied the tileable material and changed the tile amount. I also offset the location of the material until it looked good on the model. I masked portions of the material as I wanted the material to be applied differently in some of the sections of the model. I proceeded to duplicate the material and use masking as well as change the offset of the material for each duplicated layer. This allowed me to use the same tileable material across the model while making changes to different sections. Keep in mind that while using this workflow you can also use a different number of materials. In this case, I decided to only use one tileable material to keep things simple. I mapped the material to different sections of the model until I was satisfied with the look. The last thing I did was change the color of the texture by using a hue and saturation filter along with a gradient filter. So this is how you can use tileable materials and apply them to your models. This workflow allows you to mix the more traditional way of texturing a model along with using tileable materials for extra details or in this case, use a tile of a material to texture the whole thing. Let me know in the comments section if this video was helpful and if you have other ways of using this workflow. If you like this video, I also want to invite you to take a look at the channel for more videos like this one.